What's up, everybody? Welcome to the FanDuel Sunday Night Mock Draft stream. I'm your host, Simon, joined, as always, by my hater-blocking co-host, Shades On, haters out, John Luke Garofalo. What's up, JL? What up, Simon? I am wearing the hater aids today because JJ's here, and I know he's going to get a lot of hate for that haircut. <laughs> Guys, also joining us today, JL alluded to it. We've got the late round QB man himself, JJ Zacharyson with us. For those of you that don't know JJ, I, I assume you've been living under a rock or this is the very first fantasy stream you've ever tuned into, but um, he is the creator of late round fantasy football. You can find that at lateround.com and he is uh, the creator of living the stream. JJ, thank you so much for joining us today, my man. Yeah, it's great. Great to be here. Great to be back with you guys. Uh, you know, talk some talk some fantasy. It's been a minute. I haven't I haven't hopped on with you guys in a little minute. while. Yeah, you've been a little busy. You've been a little busy, JJ. No, I mean, <laughs> well, JJ, I mean, I'm just creating, glad that, that. creating that beautiful draft guide of yours. Yes, trying, trying to, trying, trying. <laughs> well, we'll see if it uh, helps you out today. Today we are going to be doing an eight man draft. Eight teams that we've got going on. We've got seven of the spots filled. We need one more spot. So I'm going to be throwing that in the chat sometime before this draft starts. The draft is going to start at promptly 7, 16 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so until then, we'll be talking a little bit of strategy, maybe some uh, ideas about what eight-man leagues mean whenever we're drafting, maybe some trends you've been seeing uh, going, going into this draft. Before that, though, a couple reminders, guys. Number one, if you haven't done so already and you're watching this show, go ahead and like this video and make sure you're subscribed to FanDuel on YouTube. Or if you're watching on Twitch, hit that follow button. It is the easiest way to make sure you don't miss out on the content that they're pushing out over here. After you do that, they've got a whole team of killer creators across multiple different platforms. You can find them on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. They're at FanDuel across all of those platforms. So make sure you go over there and find them. Guys, like I mentioned, we're doing an eight-man draft. We've done a couple of these now. You know, JJ, I don't want to brag, but uh, Jalen and I have done probably three of these eight-man best yeah. ball drafts, so you might be in trouble. But uh, I, I wanted to come to you and see if you had any uh, insight with the smaller league size. Most of the leagues we play in are 10, 12-man leagues, some 14. Um, is there anything with the smaller league size going into this that, that you're going to change about your draft strategy? Yeah, I thought you were going to say, not, not going to brag or anything, but we've won. The, the <laughs> we've, we've already um, won. Yeah, I mean, like, like anytime your your league size shrinks, it means that every lineup is better, right? And so if every lineup is better, that means that there's no, there's less room for error. And when there's less room for error, that means you have to actually win every position. Whereas if you're in, like, a 16-team league or even greater uh, and you punt tight end or something like that, you, you can get away with that. You can be okay. Um, but in an eight team league, you know, you might be a little bit more inclined to spend up a tight end and get a Travis Kelsey, you know, get a, uh, Mark Andrews, Kyle Pitts, what have you, um, to sort of get that advantage. Cause we know there's a drop off there. Um, and, and not only that, but the opportunity cost in doing that is not necessarily as great because you can then loop around and still get a good running back wide receiver. Um, you know, when you do select one of those tight ends. So that's probably an approach that I'm going to go with in this draft. Uh, you know, if things just sort of generally set up, but the crazy thing is that I think in a lot of like 12 teams, you can get away with this year, you know, not necessarily spending up at tight end. Uh, you know, my projections don't love the top tight ends. I mean, don't get me wrong. They're definitely separated within the projections. Like Travis Kelsey's right. the tight end one. Mark Andrews, definitely the tight end two. Kyle Pitts. I like, you know, I like all those guys, but um, you know, just from a projection standpoint, the way that sort of tiers kind of flesh out, 
Um, you know, late round tight ends are not terrible options this year. I know that we say that seemingly every single season and then they turn out to be pretty bad, but you know, at the, at the end of the day, uh, you know, those late round tight ends are bad. Yes. But the whole tight end position is bad. And a lot of those yeah. guys, uh, are still viable. Uh, you know, if they're, I, I always say whenever I'm talking streaming tight ends in season is the tight end breathing. Okay. Then he's probably a worthy <laughs> streamer this week. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's really the, the way that the tight end position kind of works out. So when are yeah. you uh, changing your Twitter handle to yeah, uh, lay around, lay tight, around end. tight end? Yeah, around yeah. Tight end. I know yeah, I got from, to apparently. From what I heard, you're all about the or- early quarterbacks now. I watched the stream you're on. You, you're drafting quarterbacks early all the time, right? Oh, man, man. <laughs> you know, I will say I do have I do have one thing I got to because I, I, I can rant about the quarterback thing for a little while. But, <laughs> but so the, the thing with the quarterbacks, especially like like this year, um, you know, if, if you look at the last couple of seasons and if you look at ADP over the last few seasons, so basically since like the Mahomes and Lamar breakouts last couple of years we've seen uh quarterback adp rise a little bit but on top of that what we've seen is the predictability of the quarterback position get a lot better and what i mean by that is if you look at top 18 quarterbacks by adp and how they produced in points per game the correlation between those two has become a lot like insanely strong uh over the last two years and what what it is is that people are recognizing finally that rushing matters at the quarterback position they're finally uh really drafting these these dual threat guys earlier whereas before you could get a Lamar Jackson super late um you know during his breakout year and even like Cam Newton back during his MVP year all that kind of stuff and so we're seeing that that change but the one thing I I do want to say is that last year you know the the top quarterbacks versus like the QB 12 you know in a 12 team league really weren't giving you that much bigger of an advantage they actually weren't giving you a bigger advantage at all compared to other seasons over the last decade what's really changed is that we feel a lot more comfortable and better that Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray, Patrick Mahomes, that these quarterbacks are going to be good. And it's not wrong. They are probably going to be good. But we're going to reach a point in time. It might be this year. It might be next year. But there will be a point in time where that predictability is not nearly as strong. And if you're ahead of the game with that, I think that it could be pretty good for your fantasy season. Now you mentioned like the onesie position of like tight end and how in the smaller, smaller size leagues, you want to get that advantage. Is it the same for QB since that's more of a onesie position in, in most formats? Yeah. You know, I, I, I sort of look at quarterback though, cause quarterback's just so much deeper than, than tight end. Like you can just feel right. very good. Like if I get Kirk cousins and Justin Fields as, as my two quarterbacks, like I'm not like that, that upset about it because I think that, you know, cousins not only has, you know, just general upside this year with the new coaching staff, but then Justin Fields obviously has the dual threat ability. And so, you know, and, and those guys are being drafted as QB twos. So, um, you know, I don't feel as comfortable necessarily with that in a smaller league at tight end, uh, you know, getting like an Irv with an Alberto or something like that, which is fine in like a normal 12 team league. Um, but in an eight team, you might not have that advantage as strongly, right. but the quarterback scoring week to week, just in fantasy football in general is a lot tighter. Uh, there's a lot right. of, 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 of uh, variability week over week at quarterback, which is part of the reason why we can stream so effectively is because they're so predictable um, right. from on a week to week basis. So, you know, that, that's one of the reasons why you can still sort of wait, but I, I'm, you know, in best ball in general, I'm still very cool and, and do it often uh, to in, in getting one of those like mid range QB ones, you know, like getting like a Jalen hurts or even Russ this year, or what have you. Stafford. Um, you know, yeah. Yeah. Just going, going that route and just having that like solid QB one, and then sort of throwing a dart a little bit with that that QB two spot. Yeah, not. I just wanted to put out there. I'm also still very cool and do it often. Um, I say it's, it's a regular totally that I'm pretty totally cool as well. <laughs> um, no, but uh, to that point, what what we were talking about a little bit last week was whenever with with quarterbacks, how I address that position usually in best ball or in these smaller league sizes, eight man is. It's not that I'm gonna reach or try to draft a quarterback early, but I'm a lot more willing to accept value that falls to me at that position. So if Josh Allen falls past the point where I think he should be off the board in a 12-man league, maybe I'm not making that call because there's still valuable running backs, wide receivers on the board. But in a in an eight-man league, I'm a lot more willing to accept value at those one-off positions if the draft board falls that way. Um, kind of that middle ground for me. Yeah. Guys, we got a bunch of people in the chat ready for today's show. Folks in the chat. Mr. Mick Clutch says, get pumped. Get we pumped. are pumped. And Maria says, happy Sunday. Welcome in, Maria. Jordan, glad to have you in here. And he said, I've never seen JL be this cool. (laughs) I've never seen myself be this cool either. This is unprecedented. It's all an act. It's all a facade. It's all an act. If you saw him from the waist down, it wouldn't be deeply terrified underneath the surface. Yeah. (laughs) Underneath the bottom (laughs) of the screen, he's terrified. His legs are quivering below the screen. I have no pants on right now. Mr. Scammers, it's smoking aces, JL. (laughs) Um, 
<laughs> What's up, Flowers? Glad to have you in here. We got Joey in the chat saying, I think JJ has the best looking background I've seen on the stream. Thank you. What's your uh, your favorite pop back there? You, if you got to pick one Funko pop, which one? Yeah, okay. I, this one's actually, this is a sentimental and cute, cute answer. My, my okay, daughter for my birthday this year got me these Anna and Elsa Funkos. Aww. So, and she's, she's, she's going to be four next week. So it's a very like, of cute course that's fun. your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I got to put it out in front, one. right? Got to, got to yeah. represent some Frozen there. Does she watch thought... your streams now and like, oh, that's mine. No, she she uh, comes in here and takes them and starts playing with them. And <laughs> her, her MO. Jordan in here saying, hello, Mr. Scampers. Yeah, our chat cat gets all the attention whenever he's in here. People don't even care about us the second the cat walks in the door. Um, and Jordan saying, Jordan, Mr. Scampers is Jordan. not as happy to see them. FanDuel, what's up? Welcome in draft Daddy season. Daddy FanDuel. FanDuel, thanks for hopping in and checking out for us. We got Dame in the chat. Welcome in, Dame. Glad to have up, you Dame. here. And NBA rigged saying, what up, FYF family? Happy Sunday to all the beautiful folks. Happy Sunday to you, NBA rigged. And Jail, happy Sunday to you as well. Not just the beautiful <laughs> thanks, folks. Thanks, Sam. Hey, Wanted JJ, sure happy Sunday to you. <laughs> hey, happy Sunday to both of you guys. <laughs> we got Geek Hippie in the chat. What's up, Geek? Glad up, to have Geek? you in here. And before this draft starts, which is going to happen in about three minutes, it looks like we got a question specifically for you, JJ. NBA hears enough of our voice throughout the week, I guess. Um, <laughs> he said, Jameis or Trubisky, who is set up to succeed better this season? Uh, so do you have one of these guys that you prefer in fantasy? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to go Jameis just because it's the safer choice because we yeah. don't know if Trubisky is going to be around all season. Um, it does sound like, I mean, th it definitely sounds like Trubisky is going to start the year, um, which I I'm a little surprised at that. I, I thought when, when they drafted Pickett that Pickett would just be sort of the starter right away, but it's also the Steelers and they sort of take things slow with their player development and stuff. Um, yeah. But then, on, you know, on top of that, though, uh, you know, I, I, I just... I, if I if I were guaranteed that Trubisky was going to play the entire season, I think that we might honestly say Trubisky here um, just because of his mobility, that Matt Canada offense is really good for these sort of dual threat quarterbacks, which Kenny Pickett is still that to some degree. I mean, he still has good mobility, yeah. um, but I, I do think Jameis is, is set up uh, decently well, even coming off that ACL. Joe, you agree with JJ here? Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I, I think Kenny Pickett will likely get the start uh, at some point in the season. I'm, I'm not a big believer in Trubisky's talent, uh, and I think the, the Steelers will start hitting, especially in that competitive division, they're going to start hitting a wall where they're not going to be able to get over, and I, I think they'll likely start to feel that pressure to, to put Pickett in. Uh, Jameis, I'm, I'm, we, we know what Jameis is. We know what Jameis can be for fantasy. I'm a, I think my concern isn't so much for Jameis, it's for that Saints offense and what that's going to look like this season. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm with you. And, and JJ, you said it exactly. If I was guaranteed 16 starts or 17 starts from Trubisky, I'd probably lean Trubisky here. But Jameis is just in a much safer situation. We got some more questions in the chat, but some of these I think are going to get answered as this draft gets going. I'm going to go ahead and pull this draft up right here. Like I mentioned, guys, we are doing an eight-man draft tonight. I'm going to run through how this is going to work. First of all, it is a um, it is going to be a 30 second pick timer. Oh, we need to fill this draft right here. Uh oh, we'll get it filled. I think it might delete the draft if it's not filled whenever the timer hits. So we got 30 seconds. Someone join. Join, join, <laughs> join. You guys got 30 seconds, and if we get one person in there, we'll get this draft going. That's my bad on that front. Uh, but this is going to be a eight-team league best ball. This is half PPR scoring. You're going to start one quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, a tight end, and a flex in this format. Um, it's going to be 20-round draft. Uh, so we we'll go it. through 20 rounds. We got it. Yeah, someone joined like literally with three seconds. Whoever that is, let's great, go. Great human being. MVP. Great human being. MVP. That's the way we like to do it. That's the way we like to do it. it it's got to be exciting, right? Otherwise, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> JL, you oh. and I drafting right next to each other at the 7 8. Oh boy. Let's JJ, go. where are you in here? Lifetime. I'm, oh, I'm right in the there. sixth spot. Oh, we're, we're drafting back to back to back. That's always great for a stream whenever all three of us are paying attention <laughs> to the draft in, uh, in succeeding order. Timers. Right? <laughs> it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. I'm totally not going to tilt. Do you, uh, do you have a pick in mind going into this first round, sitting there once you see your spot, the sixth round? You don't have to tell me what it is, but does the, the, does the draft <laughs> spot dictate anything about what you're thinking you're doing here? I have an idea of who I want, yes. And I'm hoping yeah, I, I definitely have an idea of who I want. Um and it might honestly yeah, I I'm I'm I, I feel good. I feel he's, good. He's I, I can go a lot so of different hard not to say it before he makes the pick. 
<laughs> yeah, it could go it could go in a lot of different directions. I'll say that if this goes if this goes by ADP, I will be pleased. <laughs> also, Mr. Scambers just taunt, taunting us. We know Mr. Scambers is going to draft a top tier team and says, we'll see how this goes making beans and Spanish rice while drafting. We get oh, it. it You're delicious. a talented cat. You can cook dinner and draft at the same time. Um, it looks like the draft has kicked off and our first pick has been made. Jonathan Taylor. Big I think that's fairly standard. JJ, is, is JT your 101 this year? He is. I think that you can make the argument for uh, CMC as the one one Um, but you know, I, I, I'd still go JT just because, you know, there's a lot of, of things that can change within CMC's range of outcomes. Technically, you know, if they don't want to use him as much because of the, uh, the injuries and such. Um, but you know, and, and he, I mean, if they use him the exact same, I mean, CMC has the highest ceiling in fantasy football period. So yeah. I, I have them in the same tier. I just have JT ahead of them. Yeah. I, I tend to be with you. I'll, I'll take JT first, but if it's just upside, like, uh, the Scott Fishbowl draft just happened. I that's a format, those big tournaments where I would take I would take CMC first. Just about that upside right there. Um, I see another question in here asking about wide receiver ones that you can find around three and round four half PPR. Well, I'll ask you this question around round five, round six. That way we're not uh giving those picks away. But I'm sure we'll be talking about some of these wide receivers throughout the draft today. Yeah, for sure. I'm almost see, up. Yeah, you are almost up. Um, we got a question from Big Hurt in here. I wanted to know, do you think Eckler gets limited touches this year? I'm going to go to you, JL, while JJ's uh, thinking about this first pick. So they drafted Isaiah Spiller. Do you think there's any concern for Eckler getting limited touches in this offense this year? Yeah, I think I think it. Oh, I'm on the clock now. I'll, I'll, I'll answer because I, I, I just screwed I just screwed uh, JL over there a little bit. Uh, I, I do think that there's some concern over Isaiah Spiller seeing more work. They've been trying to fill that RB two spot for years. Um, and really trying to like fill the Melvin Gordon sort of void. Oh. If you will. Uh, and so yeah, there it is. There's the, there's the Kelsey pick that we were talking the about Kelsey earlier. Pick. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, you know, I, I think that that Spiller could be like, I, I had some issues with Spiller as a prospect because of how poorly his pro day went and such. Um, but you know, it's not the end of the world. You know, he still was fine enough in my prospect model. Um, and, and you know, if they, if they give him work, they give him work. Like if he's good, he's good. Uh, yeah. but I do think that he's probably the scariest, uh, competition that Eckler's had, you know, over the last couple of seasons. And, uh, obviously I'm not wildly concerned. I agree with you, JJ, but I just drafted Eckler there with the eighth overall pick. He's, he's up there in that top tier of running backs for me. Even if Spiller does get some work in this offense, I think Eckler's an efficient enough back that, uh, he's still going to be a, a top tier fantasy option. And this is, he's in a great offense for the skill set that he has. Yeah, I mean, he might get limited touches. We might see some of that those rushing attempts go down. But Eckler has always been the receiving work guy, right? Like that's where he he makes his his fantasy point, uh, where he gets most of his fantasy points. So I, I'm not too worried about Eckler. Not this not this season. I, I would be yeah. maybe a little more dynasty. I think people are like kind of just selectively ignoring the fact that he's as old as some of these other players. They're they're upset that are old like Zeke. Um, but yeah, redraft, not, not too concerned. Yeah, he, does have, ever... he does have some touchdown regression coming too, that we should throw out there. Yeah. Like, like yeah, I, I don't think he's going to maintain what he did last year. You know, and maybe they do give Spiller some goal line work as well, but he's still fine. Like he's still a top, top eight pick for me over, you know, in these drafts. Yeah. And we, um, I completely forgot what I was going to say right there. So instead I'm going to ask you about your pick right there, Dowling <laughs> cook. I feel like he's often kind of like the forgotten top tier running back. Like some people are really into him, but Maybe it's the injury concerns. Maybe it's Alexander Madison behind him. But how high are you willing to draft a guy like Dalvin Cook? Very. I think he's going to be heavily utilized as a receiver in this new offense. They're going to throw the ball a lot more, a lot more 11 personnel, more than likely. Uh, and that could open things up for him a little bit. I mean, we saw that sort of with like a Todd Gurley with that McVay offense, um, you know, when they first opened things up and ran 11 personnel, and three wide sets at such a high rate compared to the rest of the league. So I think that at Dalvin Cook is in a really, really interesting and good spot. Um, you know, I, overall, I'm just bullish on the the Vikings offense. I think Kirk Cousins is uh, an underrated uh, just quarterback, a real quarterback, even fantasy to some degree. But um, you know, I just I, I'm I'm just bullish on the the Vikings offense in general. I think Dalvin Cook is going to see pretty high target share this season. And so in that in that first round, you took talking about the Vikings offense. You took Jamar Chase one pick after Justin Jefferson went. Had both those guys been sitting there on the board, would you have taken Jefferson or would you still have gone with Chase right there? I would have gone with Jefferson there over Chase. I think Jefferson is, I think you can argue Jefferson's the wide receiver one uh, overall in 
uh, sorry, I was making my pick there in fantasy football uh, this season. Like I, I still have cup ranked ahead cup looks a little bit better in my projections, but Justin Jefferson is just, I mean, it's, he's been unbelievable. I mean, there's, there's, he's been the best young wide receiver that we've ever seen statistically, um, you know, in the NFL. So I'm, I'm very, very high and, and cool with getting Justin Jefferson there. Jail's face up there is making me nervous. It feels like every happy. pick, he's just sitting up there trying to snipe. I am snipe so me. not happy. I, I honestly, like the, the three picks before me were all snipes. This is every single one is DeAndre Swift, Kyle Pitts, and then CD Lamb. And those are yeah, my I was, I was gonna go, I was gonna go Pitts to get the tight end stuff that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Now, now it's getting to the point where like I'm gonna do the whole waiting on tight end thing that I didn't really want yeah. to do, just given the, the size of the league. But you get to a point where middle round tight ends historically have been really, really bad bets. We still have a you know, we still have George Kittle um and Darren Waller on the board. Um, but there's just such good value at running back and wide receiver right now that hard to pass up it would it would be very difficult to pass up some of these guys in, in favor of a guy like waller but we'll we'll see we'll see how i'm feeling when uh when i'm on the clock here i thought about going oh, pits you know i went kelsey in the first pits. round and i thought about going pits just be just to keep them play keep away or i keep it from from the, yeah. the rest of my my league mates here but it felt early it feels really early to take pits even yeah you, it, 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 this is this is difficult for me and i might just do it because I, I I think that I'm going to be able to make up at running back and wide receiver later in the draft. I might just do this and regret it. Oh, I'm just doing it though. I'm going to go Waller here. Oh, did I? Okay, I went AJ Brown. Not what you meant to do. <laughs> I did. I honestly, I thought I was on the clock. JJ was on the clock. I thought I was on the clock. <laughs> That's fine. I'm cool with AJ Brown. It's probably you better. Love AJ the- Brown. He's yeah. now your new favorite player to He's draft now my in fantasy, wide receiver right? One, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now my, no, just my player, player number one. First oh, that's overall, incredible. AJ Brown. Every time I finish these drafts, I go and update my rankings to make my team the best. Um, that, that's good <laughs> fantasy strategy right there. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I would say the the Waller pick for me in a twelve teamer. You know, I would not even remotely get him over some of the players that are on the board here. Um, yeah. But in the in the eight team uh, draft, I just I wanted that solid tight end one. You know, to get that, that advantage because you need that advantage at every position in this kind of league. Yeah, that's a really great point. Does that change? Does that uh, does best ball affect that versus just normal season long drafts? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, you obviously can't. Uh, you can't benefit from, you know, the, the guys that come out of nowhere uh, that we see at tight end, you know, even last year, like Dalton Schultz uh, and, and Dawson Knox to some degree, but Dawson Knox at least had an ADP, but Dalton Schultz in most, most platforms and such didn't even have an ADP because people were drafting like Blake Jarwin and stuff. Um, right. And so, you know, you don't get the advantage of that. Whereas you would, you know, in a normal season long league. So it's just another reason why to feel a little bit more comfortable, um, you know, getting one of the, the, the elite tight ends early. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. He, how are you feeling about Kittle this year, JJ? I feel like he's someone who people aren't really talking about. You know, he had that sort of iffy last season where he just, you know, he's injured a lot of the season. Are you are you still bullish on Kittle or are you sort of fading him? Um, I am. I, I'm. I'm probably just like at ADP at market just with Kittle. neutral. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like part of it is that you don't necessarily want to associate your and there he goes off the board. Uh, yeah. You don't necessarily want to associate your tight ends or or any pass catcher with mobile quarterbacks, which is what you're getting with a guy like Kittle or Ayuk or whoever in that offense, Debo. Um, It's not necessarily a good thing um, historically. uh, And that's where you're, you know, with, with Trey Lance there, but uh, Kittle's just been so efficient per target throughout his career. I mean, like unbelievable efficiency per game. Now I'm on the clock. I am going to go with Javante here. Ooh, I like that pick. Before it's my um, pick, I wanted to see if I could get someone to draft someone else again. So, um, JJ, what do you think about Tyler Conklin this year? Great pick, <laughs> right? Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Tyler Tyler Conklin, to me, seems like a fifth-round pick in an eight-team league. Absolutely. You know? I couldn't agree more. <laughs> With JL sitting on the clock, oh, I can't believe he's still Ooh, sitting there, actually. Ooh, I'm Sorry, I didn't mean to bit. cut you off on the on the Kittle take right there. No, you're good. Let's um see. But Kittle's just been so. I mean, like I, I've I've talked about this on Twitter and on my podcast a good bit, um, you know, over the last month or so. But like Dalton Schultz has 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 had at times like people have have preferred Dalton Schultz over George Kittle, which I get from like a floor standpoint, maybe maybe. But George Kittle has averaged uh, fourteen full PPR points per game. I don't know the half off the top of my head. Uh, every year since his rookie season, Dalton Schultz last year was at like twelve point three. 
uh, and that was his like breakout year. George Kittle's just like next level different. I mean, he's just he's just an unbelievably efficient tight end. So I can't fault anyone for going that route. Also, guys, yeah. we got some big news. Daddy FanDuel is in the chat giving out presents. Your allowance is on the way. So put your hands out, <laughs> drop your FanDuel. FanDuel fantasy username, and Daddy FanDuel is going to throw some credits into your account. Um, just throw your username in the chat, and then we'll throw it up on the oh. screen. That way everyone watching can just send you unbelievable amounts of messages as well. I did it again. I panicked. I really wanted Lamar here, but I went Mahomes. Because the timer was running out. Oops. Yeah. You have uh, you prefer Lamar in this format or all formats, Jail? No. Uh, in in best ball, I do prefer Lamar. Uh, <laughs> no. I do want that upside. No. <laughs> no. Uh, but no, they're close enough that that I think it's fine. They're in this. They're within the same tier. I'm I'm not low on on Patrick Mahomes. Last year didn't doesn't worry me too much. And and Lamar is gonna Lamar. You know. So I think he that high upside is is huge here. I, I think you can go either way. And we were um, while we're talking about Patrick Mahomes, he's got a new cast of wide receivers. I guess some returning names, but a lot of new faces in that Kansas City offense that he's going to be chucking the ball to. Um, and, and I know we've debated back and forth, like wh who's the top guy? And I, I think it's less of a conversation about what we know and maybe probabilities and value. But JJ, do you find yourself drafting one of these Kansas City wide receivers more than others this season? Yeah, look, I, I think Juju is a really interesting pick this year. Um, I, I say that, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, look at his efficiency. It's it's horrible and, and et cetera, et cetera. But if, if you look at, um, you know, his his overall uh, efficiency and you adjust it for average depth of target, he's been just fine. Uh, it's just that he's not as efficient like per target and per catch because his average depth of target has dropped uh, given what they did in Pittsburgh, which is why we see. Deontay Johnson and the same exact criticism with Deontay Johnson, even though Deontay Johnson's a good wide receiver. Um, and so uh, I, I'm, I'm actually fairly bullish on Juju. Um, you know, I, I think if there's one player who sort of like fits this mold of, of what, and I don't want this to be taken the wrong way. And I understand it can easily be taken the wrong way, but you get a slot guy who's been efficient throughout his career uh, was a good prospect um, and, you know, is improving his situation uh, and has been more of a wide receiver too, you know, uh, over the last few seasons who could maybe blow up with that improved situation who we saw from what we saw from Cooper cup last year. What if that's what we see from, from a guy like Juju this year? So I have it Juju MVS, then sky Moore. I'm a big sky Moore guy. I just, you know, it's just, it's just preference. Right? MVS is at least a little bit interesting with that Patrick Mahomes arm. Yeah. And that's a, that's an interesting comparison. I, I haven't heard that one. I, I hear a lot of the, like, Matthew Stafford going or the Russell Wilson going to the Rams and talking about just the two wide receivers, even though the skill set maybe isn't super similar there, but elite quarterback with two new receivers um, in town. But that, I haven't heard that one with uh, Juju, but you're right. That, that's the better comparison. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, like I'm certainly not predicting it. Um, I just, I just <laughs> think that he has, I, I just think that he has a higher ceiling than people are giving him credit for because they're utilizing his numbers and his efficiency from when, he was with the Steelers and with Roethlisberger in this offense. But even then, I mean, like he was still fine for fantasy. Like he, when he was healthy, I mean, he was still racking up a lot of receptions and seeing the ball a lot because that's what good players do. And so in this Kansas city offense, he can play the slot. Uh, maybe they move him outside a little bit. Um, but, but I think that, that, you know, the, the only hesitation I would have is that LA didn't have a player in the middle of the field. Like Kansas city does in Travis Kelsey, that, that would be the, the biggest concern with Juju and his ceiling. But I do think that overall, um, not only that, but we know that defenses have take away the deep ball or have historically taken away the deep ball against Kansas City, which is part of their struggles that they had last season. And Juju's more of an underneath receiver, and he's a great red zone threat. So I think all that combined just makes him an intriguing pick this year. Do you think Kelsey gets a gets a, a bump up in that already crazy volume because without Tyree Kill there? Do you think it really gets distributed amongst the wide receivers and Kelsey stays think where he's been? Yeah, I think it just gets distributed, um, but I certainly am not, uh, you know, anti-Travis Kelsey. I, I just, I, right. I, you know, he's another year older uh, as well. I, I just think that his target share is pretty projectable at this point versus what we've seen. Yeah. Oh, I, um... JL sniping my stack. <laughs> uh, I wanted him on the last one. And honestly, I'm, I'm happy I, I ended up going with Holmes instead of Lamar here because I – Remember that I drafted Kelsey in that first round. Uh, if I had you could have grabbed uh, you could have grabbed Juju right there as well and had the have, had the yeah. double. Stack. I would much rather have Bateman though. Why yeah, I went, I went I went Gabe the babe over over Gabe Juju the babe. 
So just do you to, have um you have Juju as your number one or number two wide receiver this year then JJ? <laughs> yeah, he's my he's my my wide receiver zero. Oh, okay, sorry about that. That was yeah. rude of me. Yeah, yeah he's he's, he's, he's my yeah. You you actually draft him. It's a special draft before the draft begins when you get Juju. <laughs> You have to do a special um, handshake and everything. But Gabe Davis has been a polarizing player this oh offseason. I think a yeah. lot of the polarization has been because of his ADP and the small sample size of success we saw. Are, are you in at ADP on Gabe Davis, or is this an upside play kind of pick that you're taking right here? Yeah, I mean, it depends. I think ADP here is fine. Um, you know, and where he was drafted here, I'm totally cool with, and especially in an eight teamer where you can take some shots like that, just given the fact that you have, you're going to have pretty good wide receivers aside uh, from him. I mean, he's my wide receiver four, and I have. McLaurin as a good high floor option, Jamar Chase, who will ball out, and CeeDee Lamb, who probably, you know, CeeDee Lamb at least has a floor, we know, but the ceiling is obviously there too. So getting getting a player like Gabe Davis as my wide receiver four uh, feels pretty good uh, because, you know, I don't necessarily have to rely on him. If, if he was my, in a format like this, eight teams, if he was my two or something like that, I'd feel a little bit more nervous. But uh, since I've been a little bit wide receiver heavy here, a little bit easier to, to go that route. I mean, Look, I, I sent an email blast from from the the late round newsletter one day about I got the, it. The, the subject. Yeah, the subject line was, "Can we just be rational about Gabe Davis?" <laughs> I, I just the feel like, no, like people, JJ. people are either just like on one side or on the other side. It's like, guys, we can just recognize that there are multiple sides here with Gabe Davis, yeah. right? Like we recognize that he's it's probably he was probably an underrated prospect. He was an early declare, which we don't usually see from a smaller program. I know that the school itself is big. Um, but from a smaller program and then his touchdown production has been otherworldly. I mean, and I'm not even talking about the, the, uh, the, the playoff game. I'm, I'm just talking in general as a part-time player. He has 13 touchdowns through two seasons, in the regular season, Sorry. which we don't see from, I mean, we only see from good players that like really, I mean, the, 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 the cast of players that have done that are generally pretty good. Um, and so there's, you know, and he's going to be the wide receiver too in games where he played, uh, the majority of the team snaps, he had a 20% target share. I think we'd all buy into a 20% target share in a Josh Allen offense and in this oh, offense. So there's a, there's a lot going for him. It's just that what's against him is why did Emmanuel Sanders play ahead of him last year? You know, why, why you know, why, why is he not fully broken out yet? Like, why haven't we seen this player who's supposed to be good, you know, really, really produce. And so that's the question mark, but that's why his ADP isn't in the second or third round where it otherwise would be if it was all locked in. Now I'm on the clock. So I got to make a pick. <laughs> you got a whole yeah, 20 seconds. I wouldn't even worry about it. Yeah, just don't even stress about it. I'm sure uh, auto draft will take uh, who's next for you? TJ Hawkinson. So you can double up on tight end. I think that I'm going to go Tyler Conklin. I'm gonna, He's still sitting I'm just going to take, I'm gonna take a chance at this. Where do we? Oh, you stinker. You're kicked off. That's. Uh. I am upset about <laughs> that pick. I'm not even necessarily high on Judy this year. Like I'm, I'm a little nervous in redraft with Judy. Um, just given some reports about like Tim Patrick, seeing a lot of, uh, of work, Tim Patrick's probably going to play in the slot a good bit. It sounds like as a big slot, uh, Cortland Sutton sort of profiles more as the, as the DK Metcalf in the offense, but Judy's just, I mean, the talent is just there. I mean, he's, he was really good. At my prospect model. I think that he would have had a great season last year, if not for that ankle, um, so hopefully he clicks and you, you know, you're really just buying talent whenever you're, you're drafting someone like Judy. And at this point in the draft, you know, I, I feel, feel strong about it. Yeah. I think like two weeks, well, no, uh, yeah, I think two weeks ago when we, we did a, a similar draft, I think it was a team uh, with Josh. And I remember he went Cortland Sutton. I got Judy a couple rounds later and it just feels like they're close enough that that that's just pure value. In my opinion, they, yeah. they could finish, you know, very similarly. I definitely meant to draft TJ Hawkins in there. It wasn't, I didn't time out or anything. That was uh, <laughs> perfectly who I wanted to go along like with my market. I love the, oh, we know exactly yeah. what's going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Whew, yeah, that one didn't feel good. Uh, hopefully he has the same bye week as Mark Andrews to really just uh, add insult to injury on that one. Nope, we're good. Different bye weeks. I have I no idea who I'm going to pick here. <laughs> um, good time. Uh, I see best ball moderate in here wanting to know, is this half point? This is indeed half point in this mock draft. Um, all these FanDuel best ball drafts are going to be half point PPR. And Mr. Scamper saying Juju top 10 wide receiver. Yeah, you heard it from JJ first. Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster top. Juju. I'm just <laughs> wide, wide receiver zero. Wide receiver, wide receiver zero. zero. More than top 10 on that one. That's right. Guys, I wanted I, to pull up some. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, JL. I was going to say I'm one of three teams that went two QE so far. Oh, man. I would not recommend this. 
Damn you, well, auto draft. Let's let's pull up your team and see how we're feeling about it so far. Let's get some. Uh, Great. Jay, we'll get some instant reactions from you, and then we'll let JJ roast it. Just to um, be absolutely obliterate it. But quarterback I, I, so far. Oh, go ahead. You run us through your team. The skill Focus positions, I'm very happy with. Honestly, skill positions: Najee Harris, Etn, Dobbins. Like that's a solid crew. Uh, Etn and, and Harris cover the upside, in my opinion. Dobbins, uh, you know, cover the the worries about Dobbins. Um, obviously, Mahomes and Kyler are two extremely high process best ball is going to be a, a nice little combo there if one of them has a bad week hopefully the other one doesn't uh the wide receivers are great as well i'm really i'm honestly i'm really happy with this team so far apart from the double qb i'm i'm pretty happy with it jj what do you think about that double qb move do you think it's uh <laughs> let's focus on the one thing <laughs> yeah let's focus on the thing jl hates the most about his team yeah. and then tell me what you think about it i mean the the, the double qb move is bold uh no, I, I, <laughs> I think it's solid. I'm not. I'm not like massively huge on Dobbins uh, this season, just because of the injury and such, and, and the upside yeah. is is capped a little bit because of the the target share. Um, but I, I think the rest of the team is is strong. I mean, you he's only missing the the only quarterback that he's missing is the guy that I got in Lamar. Would would have looked Lamar, nice. Oh, would have yes, looked nice with that Dobbins and uh and, and double uh, sack Rashad Bateman. There. Yeah. Oh my God. I, I forgot I had Bateman too. Man, and if you had Mahomes, Kyler, and Lamar, man, Jail, just, just absolutely. I don't know who to stack with Kyler though. Like, I guess Marquise Brown, but it just like it doesn't feel as good as stacking a, a Raven or a Chief. They're more stackable. They're more stackable. You don't think Cardinals are as stackable? Is it the, is it the shape or what is it? I think it's 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 Kyler Murray's height. I think it, you need you need a strong foundation <laughs> at the bottom, not because right, the quarterback you're, goes you're, on the bottom. You're on the, the clock stack. right now, Jail. I know I'm terrified. Okay, I just uh, want to make sure. you were doing a good job of, of of being on the clock and talking at the same time there. So I just wanted to throw it out. Just there. really throw that in there. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm gonna go. This is way too high of a reach for him. Just incredibly high of a reach for Cole Komet. Well, tell us like why you did it then. then. Um, I saw his name and I like Cole Komet, so I picked it. Honestly, this took- list is is a bit terrifying because there's a ton of QBs at the top of this list of just the overall you know available. See, I don't want those, and I'm not like crazy about any of the running backs to this position. Draft yeah, board's I'm, looking a little iffy. I'm scrolling down, and I'm gonna. I'm just. I'm gonna start taking some rookies. I took Drake London right there. That's a good one. Um, and then I'm also gonna take Elijah back. Moore. Um, I, I I'm excited Elijah about Moore this. Was there. I know. I scrolled down a little bit, and I got excited seeing both those names down there. I did not realize he was there. I would have absolutely. I'm very big on Elijah Moore. Well, you are almost on the clock where I was going to ask you to tell us a little bit more about uh, what makes you excited about Elijah Moore. I know there's concerns with Zach Wilson and uh, the other Wilson, Garrett Wilson, going into that offense. But you, you still like Elijah Moore for redraft, not just dynasty? I do. I do. So I, I've done a lot of research on middle round breakouts, middle and late round breakouts. And at wide receiver, um, second year middle round wide receivers are unbelievable values historically. So, so I'm looking at, uh, you know, guys who, uh, exceed ADP at a, at a strong rate. Um, and, uh, and the second round wider, or sorry, the second year wide receivers, uh, in the middle rounds really exceed ADP at an extraordinary rate. They do it, uh, in terms of this is full PPR, but they exceed ADP expectation by three plus full PPR points at a 41% clip. Uh, since 2011, when the average among all middle round wide receivers outside of the year two guys is closer to like 22 percent, 23 percent. And so ba- basically, you know, this year we're, we're hashtag blessed with a lot of uh, of strong, um, you know, wider rec- second year wide receivers like Elijah Moore, Rashad Bateman, Amon Ross St. Brown, Devontae Smith, Kadarius Tony's another one. Uh, so all those guys I've just been drafting heavily because I, I they they even if their situations look a certain way, it's important to look beyond just that situation because you're still drafting for talent and we could right. be wrong. And we have to be, you know, we, we have to understand that we will be wrong about which offenses we think are going to be good and which ones aren't going to be good. What if the lions are a little bit better than you expect? What if the jets are a little bit better than you expect? What if the Ravens, even though I do think they're going to run the ball a lot more, continue their same pass rate that they had last year. Um, so right. there's a lot of, of uh, looking at those team situations and not overstating them. Uh, and, and looking at what we've just seen historically from these breakouts and second year wide receivers, not third year guys, second year guys are the ones that you want in fantasy. So you mentioned Kadarius Tony. So I feel like that, like the whole Giants team has been 
very interesting this draft season. I, I know Maria and I were just talking about Kenny Galladay uh, and Scott Fishbowl and whether he's a, a good pick. Are you interested in any of these Giants wide receivers? Uh, you know, is, where is Kadarius uh, Tony for you? And are you interested in any of the other wide receivers there? I think Kadarius Tony is an unbelievably good uh, pick, and I'm just because we're talking about, it, I'm going to draft him right now. Ooh, I like that. Strictly because of that. Walk the walk. Walk the walk, JJ. Um, so so Kadarius Tony hits a lot of checks a lot of boxes when you look at like yards per route run from rookies and such. And I, I've tweeted some lists of of things that he like these lists that he's on uh, uh when looking at rookie wide receivers. Like one of them is rookie wide receivers who played 50% of their snaps from the slot. Um, and uh, also saw 50 plus targets and had a yards per route run rate of 1.7 or higher. Uh, and he, he's on a list of just like stud after stud after stud of these like slot guys who, and one of the guys in that list, which I wish I would have thought about more when it was going on was Hunter Renfro. So it was like mm. a way of maybe seeing the Hunter Renfro breakout happening. Um, but Kadarius Tony, I mean, I think the biggest concern is like, does he want to play football? Does he care about football? I, I don't know. Yeah. This is all speculation by what like beat reporters say and stuff like that. But I'm not going to buy into that because he's still playing football. I have to trust that he's going to play and want to play football. Um, and I, I just think he's a really, really good pick. The Giants offense in general is going to be a lot better, not just because of the coaching change, but because of regression just in general. They're going to be mm-hmm. a lot better uh, this season than they were the last two. The last two seasons, they've been 31st and 32nd in total touchdowns in the league. Uh, that's just not, not going to happen this year with Brian Dable. Yeah, no, absolutely. We got a uh, Dalton in here, JL, saying stacking Ravens feels like trash. He does not like your Ravens stack. It can, but if you get the right stack, I think it feels the opposite of trash. Whatever that is, heaven. I don't know. Well, like Lamar and Mark, is that is that is that oh, what you're Lamar, going Mark, for right Andrew there? Stack? Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, Lamar I wanted, Rashad Bateman. Waited a little too long, and that's kind of the extent of it. It's honestly those two stacks. And the team that um, JJ you mentioned expecting them to run the ball more this year. Would you have any interest in? doing that uh, double stack with Lamar, Bateman, and Andrews? Or do you think that's going too all in on an offense that, while expected to be good, is likely going to be rush heavy? Yeah, you know, most of the mobile quarterbacks, when when it comes to stacking, I'm usually just stacking with one, maybe two. Uh, yeah. You know, if it's like Hurts and I can get like a Devontae and a Goddard or something like that, I, I'm not as inclined to spend like two higher end picks to get that stack, just because we know that mobile quarterbacks, it's going to be more run heavy teams and yeah. just not as much volume. Uh, but I, look, I like Bateman. I, I think Bateman is a great pick this year. I, I, I prefer Bateman a lot more at ADP than Mark Andrews this year. I, I think it's different in an eight team format. Like we were talking about totally different, but I think that Andrews, you know, he's coming off a legit, legit career year. I highly doubt Mark Andrews is going to do what he did last year again throughout his career. And he's being priced yeah. as if he's going to do something fairly similar, which is possible, but I don't think that he's, you know, the, the, the Ravens offense for a lot of reasons, they were 23rd in pass rate last year, which is still fairly low, right? Like it's still 23rd in the league, but they were ninth in pass attempts. And the reason for that is because they ran so many plays that's going to regress. I do think they're going to still run the ball a little bit more this season with a better defense, healthier defense. Hopefully the running backs are healthy as well. Um, And that's just going to bring down the volume overall in that offense. So it's a lot easier for me to draft a guy like Bateman where he's going in the middle rounds, as opposed to getting Mark Andrews in like the second, um, you know, where where I, I think he's being priced basically at like, close to where he was and, and how he performed last year. Yeah, and I, I, if I'm not mistaken, the Ravens ran the most plays out of all NFL teams. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. So. They Like, by far, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so you you know, like, essentially what you're saying is, like, you can't expect that necessarily to happen again. It's more likely that that's not going to happen again than right. it is. Exactly. I, uh, I read this comment down here and thought they said this whole thing and then just said, JK, because – I'm down here. It's on the second line, <laughs> but then saw the Dobbins on the following line. That. You, you can do a, you can do a good stack with the Ravens over there. And JJ's back on the clock at this point. What are you thinking with this pick? We're getting towards the end round 15, only six picks left. Yeah. JJ. I went, I went Irv. 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 I like that you, you were yeah, talking him up before the show too. started. Is that your uh, first tight end or your second tight end that you took? That was my second because I got Waller early on. So I just, you know, wanted wanted to get like a solid guy who could be a low end tight end one, maybe a mid tight end one this year um, and kind of go from there. My, my wide receivers are very set. Probably need to bulk up running back a little bit. I'm going to throw some darts here at running back. Um, it's just generally how I build my teams is I get a stud or two at the running back position, kind of avoid the position in the middle rounds because they've been bad bets historically. Uh, or at least like in the dead zone and such. 
Um, and yeah. then, you know, once we get to the middle rounds to the late rounds, uh, I'll just start throwing those darts at, at running back a little bit more while bulking up wide receiver, uh, as I've done in this draft. I mean, my wide receivers are pretty stacked right now. Who are some of your like favorite late round running back targets? Who are those like, you know, high upside guys you're, you're targeting? Yeah. You know, one of them, I'm probably going to get here in a second. I don't mind getting, uh, you know, sp- oh, wait, here, here goes JL about to start. About to start. <laughs> uh, why do you think I asked the question? JJ? Um, I don't mind any of the rookie backs that are on the board right now, honestly. So you went, you got James cook. That makes a ton of sense. Uh, and it's good value for him. Um, I'm probably just going to get spiller here. And I, I do think Rashad white has a lot of upside, especially if something were to happen to Leonard Fournette. Um, but I'm going to go spiller because I think Spiller has a role in that high powered offense. Um, and maybe he sees some goal line work. And then obviously he has the upside if something happens to Eckler knock on wood. Uh, whereas I think Rashad white is more so in a position where he's not going to see the field as much as Spiller will, but he would see the field a lot. If uh, Leonard Fournette gets banged up. The other thing, the other really interesting thing with Rashad white is I do uh, prospect work and I have a prospect model and in that model, I do comparables, right? And it's all based on straight up statistics. It's based on their like height, weight, and some production metrics and stuff. And Rashad White's number one comp in my model was David Johnson. And Bruce Arians was the guy who drafted David Johnson. And Bruce Arians is now in the front office in Tampa Bay. Uh, and so I, I think that they, like, I think he has a type, Bruce Arians. Yeah. Uh, and I think that that team knew what they were doing when they got Rashad White. Really good pass catcher. Sort of that same like build as David Johnson where he's like, you know, taller running back that can sort of line up as a wide receiver and and do a lot as a pass catcher. That's what Rashad White is, and they kind of, I mean, like they could utilize him in that uh, you know lined up like that if they if they truly wanted to, and if he progresses as a as a player. Um, but obviously, you know, there's upside there if something were to happen to Leonard Fournette, like if he is actually 295 pounds, like they all keep talking about. Yeah, uh, incoherently. Yeah, yes, he's been exactly. cracking me up on Twitter because that's exactly how I would respond if people started calling me fat online. People One, I would be me. wildly offended. Like you would really hurt my yeah, feelings oh yeah. if like a rumor started going around like, man, Simon's gained a lot of weight since pounds. last NFL season. <laughs> yeah. and, like looking, looking um, a little fuller. <laughs> I'd be so I think about that every time we're just like talking about their weight. <laughs> like, like how personal to just have everyone on the internet like blasting you for your weight that you've never even met. But it is insane, been, right? It's insane. <laughs> It's yeah. nuts. Like if you're out there tweeting at Leonard Fournette that he's too fat, like, come on. <laughs> one, maybe look in the mirror. I don't know who you are, but there's a chance he's in better shape than you are. And I'd say a pretty good one. Um, but he's been cracking me up with that response. I know people are moving him down. I think I'm moving him up because he's been pretty funny about it. <laughs> just, just to counteract it, just for his feelings. <laughs> you just want to make Lenny feel a little better. In a points per fat joke league, I think uh, Lenny would points absolutely move up a couple, a couple spots. There's that guy you were talking about, the uh, the wide receiver that made you a little nervous for Jerry Judy, and you added him with Jerry Judy on your team. Is that something you like to do in best ball drafts? Uh, grab multiple guys from that same maybe uncertain situation. Yeah, I mean it's a double stack too. I think I think Tim Patrick's going to see a lot of work in that in that uh, Denver offense. I have Russ and Judy already, so I'm just double stacking it up so that if they blow up in a certain week, then my team hopefully would be blowing up in that week as well. Was thinking about going running back, but I don't see enough running back. Like, there's just not it's a ugly. ton separating these guys. But I am, I am gonna make a I, like I I I I'm probably. I mean, I'm just gonna reach with my next pick just because we're so late anyway. It just doesn't matter yeah. at this point. Um, yeah, we got three I, picks I need left. I need running backs. Uh, just to sort of solidify what's going on there, because my again my wide receivers I feel pretty good about. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm I'm scrolling through my roster and similar thing though. I probably should have leaned into it. I like what you said. You take those two running backs early and then lean into the other position and go back later. You're you're betting on yourself. You're betting on those early draft picks paying off and that you identified what those value is going to be. I think I wasted some of those mid-round picks with having early picks being Eckler and Barkley. Um, and then there, there was no need for me to grab Hall and Jacobs in those middle rounds as well, I don't think. Um, probably could have beefed up at wide receiver a little bit better and filled in with a Rashad White or something here at the end and liked my team a lot better. Yeah. I mean, I think the bottom line is, you know, you're, you're looking to get first, right? Like I, I've seen questions all the time from people where they're like, Oh, I'm just going to capture this backfield. I'm just going to get both Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon. But right. realistically what you're doing is that what you're saying is that I don't trust that Aaron Jones is going to live up to his ADP in my, on my roster. So I'm going to get AJ Dillon just in case, but it's, it's you're not going to win a league that way. You have to assume the high upside case for these picks when you're drafting in most leagues in general, uh, but in best ball, especially because 
typically yeah. they're weighted in a way where you know you want to get an ROI and and that's getting first. Um, and so you know you you got to just shoot for upside and upside is not necessarily just like I need a Will Fuller type all over my roster or a Gabe Davis type all over my roster. Upside is just recognizing that you're you know it's 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 lineup structure and recognizing that uh, the players that you're drafting. Uh, you know, they, they, they work together in a way where on a weekly basis, that's why stacking works, right? Cause they're working right. together on a weekly basis to be able to give you that high ceiling if things go their way. Whereas if you capture a backfield and that backfield hits a negative game script or something, or just, I mean, if they have just a normal game and they're not in a really, really positive game script, chances are they're both not going to pan out. So, you know, if you do get like an Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon, I hope no one in this draft did that because I'm just calling them out right now. Uh, <laughs> but you know, if you, if you do Let's go that it. route, what you're really saying is I'm, I'm doing this as a floor play and not a ceiling play. And that's usually a, a, a way to, to lose. Yeah. You We're don't want to hedge this type of format. Mr. Scamper for Aaron Jones, and there was no A.J. Ooh. Dillon on that roster, so we are in the clear. <laughs> Man, so, someone's feelings were about to be so hurt. You were really going to ruin a night. Like, someone really excited, like, yeah, I'm going to watch J.J. tonight, and then they get on, and yeah. like, J.J. just ripped my team to shreds <laughs> just over and over and over again. <laughs> oh, that would be so funny. Um, this quarterback position, I, like, I waited – and it got uglier than I thought it did. Are, are there any quarterbacks? I guess now we're, we're sitting here. Maybe you guys are going to take another one. But are there any of these, like, now that a lot of the big names are off the board, we talked about Jameis Winston. We've got some of the maybe less exciting names that you think have QB1 upside, top 12 quarterback upside, or I guess in this format, top eight quarterback upside. Danny Dimes, baby. Danny, Danny Dimes. Dimes. I, I am in on Danny Keep Dimes running. this year. Uh, the, the rushing ability, you know, last year dimes had the same, did I, did I snipe you there? JL? You snipe me, but, and, and I went to go click plus on Rondell Moore cause I thought he's available and Sammy Watkins <laughs> moved up Sammy. to replace him and I drafted Sammy Watkins so week one, a, baby. It wasn't just a normal snipe. That was like a super snipe. JJ, how the heck did you do oh, that? That was amazing. Um, yeah. So, you know, with, uh, with, with dimes, you know, last year uh, he had, he had less than a touchdown pass per game and he still averaged as many fantasy points per game as Derek Carr. Um, and, and I think people are not aware that his rushing was like really, really good. He only had three fewer rushing yards per game than Kyler Murray last year. And so if you look at what Dable wow. did with Josh Allen, don't assume that, that he's going to do this with Daniel Jones because that would be idiotic. But uh, <laughs> he, he let Josh Allen just be himself and just sort of throw his body around the field. Right. Like that's what, that's what we love about Josh Allen. Uh, not, not just in fantasy, but in real life too. Right. It's amazing. Um, yeah. And so if Daniel Jones, you know, has that mentality and he teaches him that mentality, you know, all of a sudden you're going to get a lot of rushing production from him. Uh, and there's, there's just general upside in, in, uh, in rushing with these, these quarterbacks. And I already mentioned that the giants themselves should be a lot better offensively this year from a regression standpoint, new coach, all that good stuff. Um, so I, I'm actually like, I, you shouldn't be drafting Daniel Jones as your QB one. You know, I wouldn't even necessarily trust him as a QB two and a two QB build unless I have an elite quarterback with him. But if you're getting like a trio, like a platoon, uh, or if you're in a super flex league or something, and you just want that QB three after getting like, you know, two high end QB twos, uh, I think Daniel Jones makes a ton of sense this year. You yeah, I feel like he's, he's, he's going like to be drafted that. so late. Like, I feel oh, like yeah. We'll just, yeah they're, no they're one likes Daniel out. Jones. No yeah. one likes Daniel Jones. Yeah. He's but one I of those do. players that I think people like have fun hating. You know what I mean? It's not even like a they hate him. It's just like a fun name for them to be upset about being oh, yeah, mentioned. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, Jordan in here was saying, are you sure you aren't looking for week 17 correlations, JJ? is that That's your number one draft strategy, right? Yeah. I mean, look, I, I, I understand the the urge to do so. Uh, you know, in certain, in certain tournaments, uh, where, where week 17 is everything, but this, this league, I am not, no, I'm not looking for those weeks. No, absolutely not. We've got uh, another one in here. Is Gabriel Davis worth picking in the fifth round of half PPR 12 man leagues? So you were talking about your love for not love, but the excitement around Gabe Davis, the second year breakout. Um, is that too early for you? Or is that a, a round where you're willing to take that shot? Look, I, I think it's fine. Um, I, I'm not going to fault anyone for doing that. You know, he's in that sort of range for me. I think I have met like wide receiver 27, 28 or something like that. Um, and that's generally fifth, sixth round. I'm, I'm a wide receiver heavy drafter, as you can see by the roster that you're looking at where you're, you're probably staring at it and you're like, these running backs are horrific, uh, after Javante Williams. But 
uh i this is this is the typical build for me um yeah tony you know, pollard that's classic jj it's got jj written yeah, all over it very very into uh very into tony pollard this year this is and by the way i'm into tony pollard this year and i have not been in on pollard previous years this is my first year being in on tony pollard just for the record i'm that's not exciting. some like i'm not some yeah. Yeah, it's very exciting for me and my family yeah uh, <laughs> yeah the, the tony pollard stuff like i was never you know this isn't me just being like this truther who's like oh yeah tony pollard is so much better than zeke there's just a lot of logic behind why I like Pollard this year, or at least what I think is logic. Um, yeah, I, I listened really to you lay it out on your on your podcast, and it's yeah, no, I, you convinced me. I'm I've been drafting more Pollard Pollard since then. Yeah, people when, when he when he doesn't pan out, just don't don't at me, JL. <laughs> yeah, I'll lose that episode. No, no, go to the people that ran on him last year. JJ's still new to this Pollard thing, right? You don't want to. <laughs> yeah. You, you yeah, can't exactly. hold him to it this year. It's next year that you can hold him to it yeah. if he's still in on Pollard. This is right. uh, he's just testing the waters this year. Um, I, I wanted to talk about your team a little bit before we jumped off here, JJ. Two quarterback build, and then like you mentioned, you you went heavy on running back late after you grabbed those two guys early. Uh, but it looks like your strategy was really loading up on these wide receivers. You got high end guys and then a bunch of upside guys. Did did getting like uh, multiple top end wide receivers like Jamar Chase and CD Lamb uh, change the kind of wide receiver you drafted later? Are you happy with this core of wide receivers and how it turned out? Yeah, I'm I'm happy with it because you know the the way that I sort of think about this stuff is I get Jamar Chase, I get CD Lamb, two high floor, high ceiling guys. Terry McLaurin is going to produce. It's just a matter of is he going to really be a wide receiver one, which is certainly questionable. Um, so just given that, that I went wide receiver heavy there, I felt good about taking the volatility at the wide receiver position. Gabe Davis, super volatile wide receiver, Chris Godwin, super volatile, volatile wide receiver, given the injury, um, you know, Jerry Judy, even what I talked about earlier, still a fairly volatile, uh, wide out. And then I just stacked Judy with Tim Patrick and Russell Wilson to get that going. And then Rondell Moore, who I'm fairly, you know, I think more has become a gun. I think Moore's on it. Like, I, like my model liked Moore coming out as a prospect because his production was so good. I subjectively bumped him down a little bit because of his size. And then, you know, last year they just used him as this, like, I, I mean, he had like a Very two yard thing. average at the target and it was just obnoxious. Yeah. And, but the, the thing is, if he uses, if they use him in that Christian Kirk role and if they use him in the slot, I mean, he could be a very, I mean, he could be a wide receiver three in fantasy this year. So I think yeah. where I got more, it was more so I just saw him sitting there and I was like, I can't not get him here. Uh, yeah. it's too good of a value. I think even though Sammy have, um, Watkins is on the board. Yeah, even with Sammy Watkins on the board. Wow. Yeah. That, that week one's not worth it for you. Yeah, exactly. I, I think with uh, I think with Rondale Moore, like he's been unfairly typecast early in his career as a gadget player. And, yeah. and that's not what he is. Like people are, are talking about him like that's all he can offer. And I, I'm with you. I, I think he's worth that value late. If you have he was unbelievable. He was unbelievable at Purdue when he was healthy. Like un- unbelievable. And if they can if they can capture that in some way, which you know without DeAndre Hopkins there, he should get a little bit more. Uh, he gets a situation boost. We'll see if the opportunity is there. But um, you know, I think that that it's looking decent for more just as a value right now. I'm not thinking that he's going to be like a tr- full blown wide receiver one in fantasy, but I do like him where I got him. Yeah, you got him in the, what the 18th round. Yeah, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's probably one of the best values that we've seen. And then you grabbed uh, two tight ends, Darren Waller early, Irv Smith very late. Is this generally what you do at the tight end in best balls? Do you are you liking just rolling with two of them if you get a good one early? Yeah, if you get a good one early, I'll go two. But if I don't, then I will uh, I will get three. Um, yeah, so three you know, I would get like if I, if Irv Smith were the first one, then I would get like a David and Joku, and um, you know maybe Albert O or like a Brevin Jordan if I like really really missed out on the tight end <laughs> position. Um, you know, I'd I'd go that route, but go go two or three with two being with the the better tight end. Yeah. And guys, uh, this draft is done now, but guys, FanDuel, Daddy FanDuel is not done passing out money. So if you guys want some. If you guys want some of Daddy FanDuel's allowance, make sure you put your username in the chat and they will load up your account with some of those nice DFS credits. Just have to say money, please. Daddy money, FanDuel will hook please. You up. Um, <laughs> and Geek it, it be in here. TV Geek. This is for everyone. I wanted everyone to know his username. <laughs> it's FanDuel user. <laughs> Just dox um, <laughs> No, we don't encourage doxing on this. That's only on the other show, JL, that we encourage oh, doxing. Yeah, my not bad, my not bad. on this one right here. Um, that's going to be it for our draft. But before we go, JJ, any any final words, any insults towards either of us, any uh, strategy <laughs> tips that you want to throw out before we before we call it here today? 
Yeah, I mean, look, I think probably the worst pick in this draft was Sammy Watkins, I'd, I'd say. <laughs> um, I think so, too. I'm not I the, agree with you. Not, <laughs> then why'd you pick him, Jay? No, uh, no it, was, it was a great time. Great catching up with you guys and doing a show again. It's been a minute, like I said earlier. Yes. Um, and, and you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to absolutely destroying you guys in this league. Oh, I can't wait. I'm really looking forward to it, too. If you haven't, make sure you go check out JJ's uh, draft guide. It is a work of art, truly. Thank it you. is a work of art. It's beautiful. Appreciate it. And you can you can find that on his website, guys, if you uh, have not already found it. It's at lateround.com. So make sure you go check that out over there. Um, JJ, thank you so much again for taking the time to come on and draft with us today. This was an absolute blast. And I, too, am looking forward to beating JL heavily uh, in this league <laughs> yeah. this season. As long as we beat JL, it's fine. You guys didn't know this, but I'm actually drafting to an entire room full of people. They're all They're just. Well, they were there at the beginning, but now they've yeah. left. They've they told me to draft Sammy Watkins. They're like, yeah, look, yeah, look, yeah. look at those Sammy Watkins fans in there. <laughs> look at all <laughs> these Sammy Watkins truthers here. <laughs> Guys, before we jump, another reminder, if you're not doing so already, go over and follow JJ on Twitter. Truly, you're missing out on one of the best follows in the entire industry if you're not following him yet. You can find him on Twitter at late round QB. Um, whenever you change it to late round tight end, let us know so we can let yeah. people know, yeah. JJ. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but go over there and follow him. JJ's truly one of our favorites, one of the best in the business. And like JL mentioned, his draft guide is uh, chef's kiss. It's beautiful. Kiss. Uh, so go check that out. Um, after you do that, if you're watching this, you're already on the FanDuel YouTube or Twitch channels. So make sure you hit that like button on this video and follow them on Twitch so you don't miss out on more killer fantasy content as we approach the NFL season. We're getting close. It's draft Coming time, up. baby. Up, boys. It is. I got a draft right after this with my cousins. This was good practice. I hope they weren't watching, so they, uh, they're they not going to snipe all my picks right after oh, they're this. they're watching. They're watching. Absolutely, they're watching. <laughs> but, uh, guys, that's going to be it for us this evening. Any final words, JL or JJ? Not final words isn't the last thing you're ever going to say, but just for the stream. Trading makes fantasy fun. Indeed it does. We're, gonna, we're out of here, guys. We will see you all next week. Until then, adios, everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah, and Maria says she used the draft guy. She did, JJ. That's true. For Scott Fishbowl. Hey, he was nice. using your rankings. I like it whenever we just end the stream mid-conversation, like we're talking. And <laughs> yeah. Oh, 